In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and God saw it was good. Like all the other systems of the human body, the sense of smell is also an extremely complex design. Now let's examine more closely the various parts of the system. The nasal cavity that detects smell is just beneath the eyes and is lined with a sticky mucous fluid. This mucous membrane measures just six hundredth of a millimeter thick. Specialized olfactory nerve cells are another part of the smelling system. The basic task of these cells is to take messages from smell molecules and take them to the olfactory bulbs. A smell cell is formed by three main parts. The cell's body in the middle, and then on one end, tiny hairs called cilia, and on the other, nerve extensions called axons. At this point, astonishing things happen at the axons on the other end of the smell cell. The axons, whose number ranges between 10 and 100, work together in order to transport the signal in the cell to the olfactory bulb inside the brain. They do this by forming a bundle in order to reach the olfactory bulb, and as a group, pass through a porous, paper-thin piece of bone called the cribriform plate. It would be no exaggeration to call the special design of the cribriform plate a miracle. This bone has pores in it which allow the passage of the olfactory neurons. Had the bone not been designed in just this way, it would have been impossible for the nerves to connect to each other, and so would have made smelling utterly impossible, even if all the other pieces of the system were right in place. By virtue of this perfect planning behind all the details of our smell system, communication in the smell cells goes off without any hitches. The olfactory bulb is another important part of the olfactory or smell system. The olfactory bulb lies on the front side of the brain, on top of the nasal cavity, concealed upon the brain case. There are two olfactory lobes in the brain, just as the nose has two nasal cavities. Each of these lobes is about as big as a pea. The olfactory lobes work like a newsroom at a TV station or newspaper. All the signals coming in from the olfactory receptors first gather in this center. Millions of pieces of information are reorganized here. Later, they are sent to the related spots in the brain through smell nerves in order to be reassessed. The olfactory membrane is a thick yellow-brown structure about one inch square, located in the upper part of each nasal cavity. It consists of about 100 million smell receptor cells, which are surrounded by supporting cells. The smell receptor cells have an olfactory vesicle bearing cilia, which project into the mucus that covers the smell membrane. Chemicals in the air react with the cilia and stimulate the receptor cells. The smell information is passed by the receptor cell axons which leave the membrane as the first cranial nerve and which relay with mitral cell axons to the olfactory cortex. The supporting sustenacular cells contain a pigment that colors the membrane yellow. The membrane also contains Bowman's glands which secrete mucus. Their function is to keep the membrane moist so that chemicals can dissolve and stimulate the cilia. If you can't smell you probably can't taste very well either. They are closely related functions. Receptor cells for taste and smell are located in the mouth and nose, respectively. As the receptor cells are stimulated, they send impulses from these organs to the brain's smelling and tasting centers in the cortices. For taste, impulses stimulated by the chemical compounds in food are sent to the gustatory cortex. For smells, impulses stimulated by chemical compounds in odors are sent to the olfactory cortex. As new compounds stimulate the receptors, the brain forms an odor memory bank so that it can recall the odors the next time they are present. <laughs>